In this video, we're going to talk about angular momentum and the equations that you need to know associated with it. So first, let's begin our discussion with linear momentum. Linear momentum is mass times velocity, represented by lowercase p. So any object that has speed or that's moving has momentum. So I think of momentum as mass in motion. So this block that's moving at a speed of 20 meters per second has momentum. A train moving at 15 miles per hour has a lot of momentum. It's moving fast and it has a lot of mass. So that's momentum, mass in motion. Now, angular momentum is very similar to linear momentum. Just as linear momentum is mass in motion, angular momentum is mass in rotational motion. So anything that has the ability to rotate or spin has angular momentum. And angular momentum is equal to inertia times omega. So it depends on the inertia of an object, which is proportional to the mass of the object and how that mass is distributed throughout the object. And also, it's related to how fast the object is spinning, the angular velocity of the object. And so angular momentum, like linear momentum, is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. So notice the similarities between these two equations. Inertia is basically the rotational equivalent of mass in that equation. Angular velocity is the rotational equivalent of linear velocity. And angular momentum is the rotational equivalent of linear momentum. Now there are some other equations to know. Newton's second law states that the net force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. The net torque acting on an object is equal to the inertia of that object times the angular acceleration. Now, angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity divided by the change in time. So notice that inertia times omega is momentum. So the change in momentum, that is the change in angular momentum, is inertia times the change in angular velocity. So therefore, we can replace this part of the equation with delta L. So we could say that the net torque is equal to the change in the angular momentum of an object divided by the change of time. The same way as the net force of an object is the change in its linear momentum divided by the change in time. So this is another equation that you want to keep in mind. Now, we need to talk about the conservation of momentum. Linear momentum is conserved if the external forces acting on the object is zero. So the net external force acting on an object, if it's zero, then the initial momentum will equal the final linear momentum, particularly in a collision or in any situation. However, momentum can change if there is an external force acting on the object. But if there's no external forces acting on even a system of objects, then the total momentum of that system will remain the same. Now, the same is true for angular momentum. Angular momentum is conserved, meaning that the initial momentum and the final angular momentum will be the same if there are no external torques acting on a system. So if the net torque is zero, then the initial angular momentum will equal the final angular momentum. So the initial angular momentum is I initial times omega initial, and that's equal to the final momentum, which is I final times omega final. So if you increase the inertia of a system, the angular speed will decrease, such that the angular momentum is constant. And if you decrease the inertia, the angular speed or the angular velocity will increase. So let's say if you have a merry-go-round with an inertia of 500. And let's say the merry-go-round is spinning with an angular speed of, let's say, 2 radians per second. And now let's say if we place a box on the merry-go-round. So that will increase the inertia 
of the whole system because the mass increased. And so let's say the inertia changes from 500 to 600. Because the inertia went up, the angular speed of the merry-go-round has to decrease. And you could find the new speed using this equation. So the initial inertia is 500. The initial angular speed is 2. The final inertia of the system is 500 plus 100 from the box. So it's a total of 600. And so the final angular speed is going to be 1,000 divided by 600. So it's going to be less than 2 radians per second. So it's now about 1.67 radians per second. But the angular momentum of the system is conserved. It's 500 times 2, which is 1,000. So that's not going to change if you drop the box straight down, such that it generates no torque with the whole system.